Hi, and welcome to this Latino Ministry for Christ channel. Before we proceed to the reflection you have come to see, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel, to activate the bell, to give us a like, to share this video, and to leave your comments. This will allow the algorithms to promote the reflections so that more people may be reached with the gospel. God bless you. In the reflection for today, the widow of name and the compassion of Jesus. The bubonic plague is an infection that is primarily transmitted to humans through infected fleas that travel on rodents. It was called the Black Death and it killed millions of Europeans during the Middle Ages. The story is told of an Oriental princess whose son, a boy of just a few years, lay smitten victim of the plague and dying. The mother was a short distance away, but the doctor had forbidden her to approach to prevent her from dying as well. As she looked heartbroken at his son, his little eyes widened and turned to her tear-stained face. There was the loving face that has so many times dispelled his childhood's problems and healed his bruises with her kiss. Why not now? His little arms reached out to her as her childish voice said, Kiss me, mama. Kiss me, mama. The doctors have forbidden it, and so she hesitates. Still, her heart yearns for the little sufferer. Again, the tender voice of the child begs her, Kiss me, mama, kiss me. What does she care about the doctors now? It is the last request of her dying boy. She rushes to hug his small body to her chest and cover his feverish cheek with her kisses. And the child finally dies. A mother's love and compassion know no limit. For the reflection of this day, we read in the Gospel of Luke. Soon afterward, Jesus went to his disciples to the village of Nain, and a large crowd followed him. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it, and the bearers stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Great fear swept the crowd, and they praised God, saying, a mighty prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people today. And the news about Jesus is spread through Judea and the surrounding countryside. Luke chapter 7, verses 11 to 17. The Greek word used in this passage is splachniski, one of the most intense that could be used to describe this emotion. The King James Version says that he had compassion on her, but even that phrase doesn't capture the depth of Jesus' feelings at this moment. In my opinion, I think the translation of the version of the scripture called the, the message actually describes it best when it says, when Jesus saw her, his heart broke. That woman's tears touched the deepest part of his heart. But 
What was it about this woman that would have moved Jesus so powerfully? Well, it was a woman who had just lost her son, her only son. That would be tragedy enough for any woman. But the Apostle Luke insists on describing to us that this was not the only sadness that woman had experienced. Verse 12 tells us, The young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. That woman had lost her only son, and he was a widow. She had lost both her son and her husband. Emotionally, that must have been devastating. Her tears were the tears of a woman who had been struck down by the specter of death. And to make matters even worse, in the culture of that time, this woman was homeless. She had no visible means of support. The breadwinners of her life, husband and son, were both gone. And she was going to be left to fend for herself. There is one more clue about the kind of woman this mother was. Let's look at who's at the funeral with her. A great crowd of the people accompany her. At that time, it was not uncommon for wealthy people to hire mourners for the funeral of a loved one. But this woman was not rich. She could not afford to hire people to attend his son's funeral. But a large crowd appeared anyway. Why? What's in it for them? Nothing, except they seem to care about this woman's pain. They care about her and they want to be there for her. I suspect that this widow has given herself to others in a selfless way, and that now the entire town wanted to be there with her in her suffering. They wanted to share her grief and pain. That was all anyone could do. That is, until Jesus, the Son of God, appeared. When Jesus appeared on the scene, all he had to do was to speak the words and the dead man would rise again. You know how I would love to be able to go to a funeral and be able to touch that person in the casket and say, get up. I think it would be one of the most gratifying experiences a person could have in their life to raise the dead. But we know that one day the Lord will transform the living and with a shout and with the trumpet of God will resurrect the dead. What a long-awaited moment for those of us who love Him today and await His coming. A glorious manifestation of His mercy, comfort, and compassion. Speaking of the mercy and comfort that flows from compassion, the Apostle Paul tells us in the second letter to the Corinthians, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. A little girl came home from a neighbor's house where her little friend had died. Why did you go? questioned her father. To comfort her mother, said the, the child. What could you do to comfort her? I climbed into her lap and cried with her. When you and I attend a funeral, those who are grieving know that we could not resurrect the dead. They know there are questions that we cannot answer, but they want us there anyway. Why? Because our presence comforts them. It gives them the opportunity to share their pain with someone who cares. Together, we are participants in divine consolation. I can't raise the dead. I don't know all the answers about death, but this I know. I know that the Lord gives me comfort, and because I know Him 
and he comforted me. I can share his love, compassion, and comfort with others. Jesus never performed a funeral, but he didn't visit all the graves either. He did not attend all the funerals, and Jesus did not raise all the dead from the grave. Why not? He could have done it, don't you think? He could have visited all the cemeteries in the land of Israel and resurrected all those who had died. But that was not the reason Jesus had come to this earth. Furthermore, why would Jesus want to raise people from the dead and only for them to die again? When Jesus resurrected the widow's son, he did so knowing that this child would eventually die again. Jesus was giving his widow a temporary solution to the problem of death. In all likelihood, Jesus resurrected this boy and he would outlive his mother, but he would still die again. Death is a painful reality of life. We are all going to die someday. But why would we want to come back to life only to die again? We have read stories of people who died on the operating table, in their hospital bed or at home. They stopped breathing. They were declared dead. But something called them back to this life. Many of them talk about seeing a great light, feeling at peace and feeling the presence of God and many of them share the same emotion, a deep feeling of disappointment. They did not want to come back. Why would they? Why would they want to return to this life and go through the experience of death again? You see, Jesus didn't come to give us a temporary reprieve from death. He did not come so that we would go through earthly death over and over again. The Apostle John wrote, For it is my Father's will that all who see His Son and believe in Him should have eternal life. I will raise them up the last day. John chapter 6 and verse 40. When Jesus raises up from the dead, it will not be temporary. When He raises us from the grave, we're not going back. There will no longer be any death, for we've been granted the victory in our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the hope of all of us who eagerly await His coming. Glory to God. According to the prestigious magazine Life, William Randolph Hearst, the famous American newspaper publisher and politician who developed the largest newspaper chain and media company in the country, when he was 75 years old, banned the word death from being mentioned in his presence. However, by ceding voting control of his publications to a lawyer, the man who had arrogantly and brilliantly ruled a 200 million empire acknowledged death, although he never mentioned it. The statement simply said that Mr. Hart had become aware of the uncertainties of life. The future is completely uncertain for those who are far from God, Christ and His grace. But this is not the case for those of us who proclaim and live our faith in Christ. My dear friend and brother, just like the life of the son of that widow of name, ours is destined for the natural death. The goodness and compassion of Jesus Christ will one day arrive so that if we are dead on the day of His return, we too can be raised from the dead. To the powerful voice of the Creator, we will be lifted up and transformed to a life that has no equal. And if we are among the living, we will be transformed and caught up in the clouds to receive the King of kings and Lord of lords. As the Apostle Paul declares in the first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 13 to 18, Come, Lord Jesus. Dear Father, 
We live in dangerous times. The nations are in uproar and the predictions of your word are unfolding like a scroll before us. Evil has never been stronger than it is now, and the end has never been so closer. Our world is in complete chaos. Lord, provide us with your spirit of power, love, and perseverance. Help us share the gospel in these last days. Give us a sense of urgency, anticipation, and evangelism as we await for your return. Help us to persevere as we wait for the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call. Dear Lord, give us patience, give us strength, we pray in Christ Jesus, your Son. Amen.